Hey there card readers, April here, and today I'm gonna to show you six underrated Oracle decks. Decks that I just don't see people using that I absolutely love. And I think they're an excellent addition to your collection, especially if you're a tarot reader. I love using these cards at the end or even the beginning of the reading to sort of set the tone of the reading. They're just, they're fabulous. The first five are in no particular order of how much I like them or don't. But the last one is my absolute favorite deck to work with. So I'm gonna kind of go into what I like using each one of these decks for. I'm gonna show you the cards, of course, and there'll be links down below if you're interested in purchasing. Those are affiliate links and I'll make some minuscule amount of money off of them. First up on my list, and I absolutely love this deck. Love, love, love this deck. It's by an independent creator. You can only get it on Etsy, so it's not mass produced. When you get it, it comes like beautifully wrapped. It's just, there's so much care that's been put into this deck and you can really feel it in the cards. And that is the Soul Truth Oracle deck here. And it says self-awareness cards deck. And it really is about self-awareness. This deck, it's amazing. It's by Brianna Hosey. This deck comes with those nice little finger holes there. Do you ever get a box that doesn't have those and it's like you can't get it out of the box. You're constantly just, <laughs> uh, you know, struggling with it. I, I really prefer those holes on a box. So this does not have a guidebook. She's very eco-conscious, very, very eco-conscious in her packaging and the fact that she didn't produce a book, and that is because these are two-sided cards, but I will get to that in a minute. What I love using this for is, you know how sometimes you sit down and you're just kind of really full <laughs> and you're not totally sure on what to do a reading on? This is a great place to start. These questions are just so thought-provoking and they really take you on a journey. Look at this, am I on the right path? Am I willing? What am I looking for outside myself that I already that is already within me? These are just really beautiful. I love this just kind of soft colors and all of the feathers on here. And now here's the back side. So this one just got in there. Good way to segue into that. This is a great question here. Am I afraid to be seen? Wow. So you can see if you're if you're using this with tarot, then you could start with this as your main card and go, wow, this is this is what I'm diving into right now. And like I said, if I'm full, it's great. So am I afraid to be seen? And then you could just do a tarot reading or you can even dive into the backs of the cards. And it says here at the top, the world doesn't want you to hold back any longer. Time to shine your unique light on the world. You were made, for, you were made from love and from love you are whole. There is no more hiding. There is no more shame. There is only truth live naked and free. And so, you know, for me, if I was triggered like by shame, you know, I might draw some cards on that. I might draw some tarot cards on that. Or, um, you know, if I was uh, triggered by the fact that I feel like I'm hiding, I might act, you know, ask about that, live naked and free. So what does that mean to me? I might ask something about that. So these are great jumping off cards. And then it says today's soul action. So you actually get something that you can do. What parts of me do I hide so I can be socially accepted and fit in? Am I being authentic? Do I allow myself to be all of me? What do I need to feel so I can be safe to be seen? Journal your answers. So again, this deck is just a great jumping off point. You can, I, as I was recording this, I found out you can order this on Amazon mass market, or you can still order it from her on Etsy if you want to support her directly. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure what's going on. If maybe she's just selling it through Amazon or what, but I will have a link to both of those down below so you can figure out which way you want to go. Deck number two is an oldie but a goodie. I don't even know when this was published, but I've had this for a very long time, so long that I don't have the box anymore. And I feel like this deck is really good for hard truths. Uh, if you just want your deck to be airy-fairy and kind of say only nice things to you, this is not the deck for you. This deck is gonna shoot straight to the heart. And it is the Energy Oracle cards. And these are by Sandra N. Taylor. This deck is pretty darn old, um, published in, just feels really old to me. Yeah, 2013, so that's, that's quite a while ago. 
has a good little book um, that it comes with and you will find that you've got the name of the card <clears throat> actually let's just go to 40 since I've got that one up top um, there it is you've got the name of the card on there and then the keywords that go with it are right here in there so this one is charity of thought personal vision it has an upright meaning a reversed meaning and then something that I really like about this is that it has an affirmation. And so you kind of walk away with something in your hand that you can really hold on to that you can take forward. This is a great deck for beginners, like if you're just getting into cardomancy or if you're trying to combine. I feel like if you're trying to combine Oracle and Tarot at the same time, that this is something that will be easier. Again, this is these can be really hard hitting direct messages i mean look this is financial constraints it's gonna it's gonna it's it's just very very direct in its approach uh you know it's it's shiny it's a mass market uh, the backs are pretty uh caring connection so there's some some really interesting ones and i want to kind of get here we go this is like like this deceit i mean take a look at this pretty intense and then over here, attachment, when you look closely at this, I wonder if I can get this on the camera here. Um, when you look closely at it, you can see that she's chained. I don't know if that's got a reflection up there, if you can actually see that, but she's chained to this while she's looking at this pretty sparkly thing. So again, as I said, some of the messages in here are pretty direct, like broken heart. I mean, not that we don't have the three of swords, uh, but so, you know, this is, this is not just an airy fairy deck. All of you out there on tarot tube, just do such beautiful pairings. I tend to pair through energetics. So if I need this deck, then this is the deck I'm going to pull out all tied up. Angel of balance. If you like angels and chakras, you know, you've got some chakra and some angel work in there. Again, 53 cards. So it's not too small and that's really nice for the price. It's very affordable. Deck number three is one of those decks that I got on one of those Hay House sales, you know, like I was scrolling through Instagram and there was that decks for $7 from Hay House, the Hay House sale. How many of you have been suckered in by a Hay House sale? <laughs> yes, I think we probably all have. And I ordered quite a few Oracle decks because Hay House is, is really great about producing Oracle decks. And this one is Notes from the Universe on Love and Connection and it's by Mike Dooley. This deck always surprises me with the messages that it puts forward. This 60 card deck by Mike Dooley is just super fun. It really is a great deck. And um, again, no guidebook because the backs have messages on them. We'll get into that in a minute. But again, great jumping off point or ending. Like you've been doing your reading and... Um, this is kind of your wink from the universe. That's what I call them at the very end. Like, what are your guides saying? Or what is your wink from the universe? You'll, you will be surprised. Time to make a demonstration, which is really interesting. And of course, this these are um, notes from the universe on love and connection. So of course, in a relationship, time for making a demonstration. So these are good for relationship readings. I don't call them love readings, you guys, because... <laughs> Love is something very complex and it comes out of relationship. So I do relationship readings for people. I don't do love readings. You know what to do. So, you know, when you get that at the end of the reading and you're sitting there, it's like, ugh, that's that could tip you to that place where you're like, uh, I didn't want to hear that, but I do know. And I just, I was hoping that the cards would tell me. And I think that's great because it's really about owning your power. Sorry, I'm still really scratchy. I just got over laryngitis. So as a matter of fact, I just want to let you know that all of the cards I'm featuring on here are heavy on keywords. And I do like, you know, keywords. Let's look at the backs here real quick. So this one is, let's do a small, <laughs> let's do a smaller one. You glow, we beam. Okay. So you glow, we beam. Let's see what the back has to say here. In case everyone should, in case anyone should ask, your heart isn't so large because of your wings. 
It's your wings that are so large because of your heart. Isn't that sweet? Sometimes loving so much can be pretty heavy. Thanks for all you've shared, the universe. So I, I really like these, they're very thought provoking. I honestly do not tend to use the backs. I tend to use just this side and I like them again as those winks from the universe or as jumping off points. Deck number four is another semi oldie but goodie. I think this is printed in 2014. This deck again is very straight shooting. I love the fact that it has keywords on it. It really is a very direct answering or thought provoking deck. And it is the soul's journey lesson cards. And they really are about the lessons that you're learning on your soul's journey. I really, really love them. And it's by James Van Pra. Am I saying that wrong? Prague? If it were Prague, I think it would be G-U-E at the end. Anyway, I'm probably saying that wrong. Sorry, James. 44 cards in this. And this does come with a guidebook here. Here are the backs. I kind of like them. Again, mass market decks. All of these are mass market decks, so they're very affordable. Well, I guess the first one, Soul Truth, was not originally mass market. Um, and it, it is the, probably the most expensive. But so in here... You'll get the keyword, which is on the card, which I like. Um, and then there's a, an affirmation. So like this one in doubt, and it's also on the card as well. I release the need to know all the answers. And then there's just a, you know, a brief description of each card, just a couple paragraphs. And they just really read really well. Let me just get one here. Oh, failure. I understand that a mistake is only an opportunity to learn. Life on earth is full of experience. It is our human brain that views outcomes as good or bad. The soul simply views them as chances to grow. No matter what, be true to your dreams and creativity process. So that gives you <clears throat> a feeling for these cards. And they just have like really simple mandalas on them, as you can see, but I like them. They're very colorful. I love that they have, you know, the, just these big keywords on them. You know, I use these again. I can, when I was doing weekly readings, a lot of times I would put these out, like I'd put one in career, one in love and one in spirit. And then I would draw tarot cards after it to elaborate on it. So that would kind of be the lesson that your soul was working on for the week. And again, these are not all sweet love and light either you know i like decks that take me into places that i need to go grief and death are very important aspects of our personal development as much as acceptance and perseverance are and so there's that failure card loneliness worry you know these are things that we face courage blame you know when we're disempowering ourselves we tend to be in a place of blame and so understanding this and having this book that, that really calls you to look at the lessons that you're learning with yourself. Again, these are very simple, very simple cards, but I feel like they are very profound and lovely to work with. Deck number five, continuing on that Hay House roll, another deck by Hay House here, another great deck that I feel is so easy to use. You could actually use this deck as a standalone, just like draw a card, like, oh, I need something right now. What do I need to hear? A little bit softer, sweeter, very supportive deck is the Wild Offerings Oracle. And this is by Tasha Silver. This deck is so pretty. The colors are soft and sweet. And again, the messages are incredibly supportive. 52 cards here by Tasha Silver. And I've had this deck for a very long time. There is no book to this, is there? No, there's no book to this. I love these backs, aren't they cute? I think they're really cute, the elephants on there. And what I like about these is they have a keyword, so you can you could just go on the keyword if you want. And I, I, I like the art, I love the colors, are really fun, compassion. And then there's a little, it's, it's like a prayer almost. And so I do like these at the end of my reading. And if you've ever gotten a reading from me, 
there's a good chance that you may have gotten one of these. Um, this is a great card a day thing where, you know, you just pull it out and you're like, okay, what am I going to, just give me a little, a little word, gratitude, um, and a prayer. They are just really great striving. Are you striving? Solitude. What does that mean to you? Where you can just have like, I wish I could find one that's a little bit more of a prayer because some of them are prayers. And I really like that. If you're, if you're turned off to the word prayer, I just want to say it's, it's such a wonderful way to connect with the universe is through prayer is to make a petition. And you know, that, isn't that what magic is, is, you know, making a petition from the heart and opening yourself up to the universe, um, to, to step in and reveal itself in a way that you are just unable to to fathom in the moment and knowing that we are infinite and that everything is within us, prayer is a wonderful way to grab hold of that when you don't know how. Despair, so this one here. I need your divine intercession right now. O oh, great spirit, lift this darkness from my soul. Free me from this burden. Open me to your highest plan May I be peaceful, may I be a peaceful vessel for your love. Isn't that sweet? These are, like I said, these are great for at the end of a reading or just as a daily poll. Deck number six, last but certainly not least, my favorite Oracle card deck, the one that is like, I, uh, you know, totally me. I totally use it every week, sometimes multiple times a week. I think this is, if you had to choose one of these Oracle decks to get, this is the one. This is the one that I feel like is always applicable, can always help you, is always ready. Again, can be a standalone deck. And probably no surprise for those of you, especially who've gotten a reading from me, is the power of surrender cards. If you're tired of hearing about these 52 wonderful cards, too bad. <laughs> I think they're just so great. And I'll stop talking about it when everybody has them. Uh, these are gilded. I like gilding. They're kind of thrashed because I've had them for so long and they're a little bit warped, but that's just fine. I've talked about this before, but as people doing spiritual work, especially if you're engaging with a magical practice or a spiritual practice of any kind, you are working on yourself. You are doing the work of surrendering, of letting go, of laying down, of giving yourself over to something right moving always moving towards yourself and refining what it is that you are and everything that you feel so here um oh, here we'll just look at this one surrender your attachment to results the formula for success is to do all you can to make it happen then let go of the results holding on too tightly to a desired outcome can sabotage it Wow, and we just talked about that in the last grouping of cards there. So, you know, I love this. Surrender to passion. Surrender negative thinking. Surrender the idea you can fix someone. Ooh. So where do I use these? <clears throat> Usually at the end of a reading, honestly, when I use these. Or again, as a daily draw. But usually I do a weekly one just to kind of get my mind to wrap my head around what it is that I need to be letting go of or relaxing into because these are both like surrender to rest and sleep surrender to setting limits this is a good one you guys let me just read it because somebody needs to hear this it's healthy to set boundaries in your relationships practice expressing your needs and remember that no is a complete sentence and I always tell my clients you are empowered to say no <laughs> You know, chances are if you're watching this, you're fairly empathic. And so you may struggle with saying no. You may struggle with setting limits. I think we all find ourselves. Surrender low self-esteem. So this is uh, one to let go of. Surrender to non-action. Surrender to divine timing. Surrender to your soul's path. Surrender your desire to control people. Surrender to spirit. Love, 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 love this deck. I've got to tell you, if I was going to say just use one deck, one Oracle deck in your life, this would be the one.